In this video, I'm going to review the Lumina Grand Executive Condo along with its pros and cons and whether it's a good buy for you to consider. Lumina Grand EC is located around a 10 minutes walk to Bukit Gombak MRT. Was the future Tengah Park and Tengah Plantation MRT stations open in 2027 or 2028, then you will have 3 MRT stations within walking distance. Key collection is estimated to start in 2027, although legally, the expected vacant possession is in 2029. This means that by the time the resident moves into this EC, the new MRT stations are roughly ready around the same time as well. In terms of amenities, you will be two blocks away from the Lee Quest Mall or you can take a bus to Jam, Westgate or West Mall. For parents, you'll be happy to know there are quite a lot of school options within the 2 km radius and it's worth noting that ACS is moving to this area in 2030 and will be within 1 km range of Lumina Grand EC. That will be a big selling point in the future as ACS is considered a good school by many. It is also close to two major business hubs, Jurong Innovation District and Jurong Lake District, as well as the upcoming Tengah Town, which will even bring more amenities to the area. Regarding the development itself, they are offering 3 bedroom, 3 bedroom premium, 4 bedroom, and 5 bedroom units for you to choose from. There will be 512 units in total making this a mid-sized development. The highest floor is level 12 or level 13 depending on which block you are looking at. So it's not really a skyscraper but on the positive side, this means that you don't have to share the lifts with so many people. You might ask who is the developer? The developer is CDL which has 60 years of experience in construction with an extensive portfolio. If you look at their website, I think they literally built hundreds of buildings in Singapore and abroad. Now let's look look at the site plan. If you are expecting a swimming pool, then you'll be happy to know that this development will have three swimming pools. One a 50 meter lap pool, another one for kids pool, and there will also be a jacuzzi pool. Other amenities include a gym, a community clubhouse, barbecue pits, a playground for the kids, a tennis court, and there's also a function room that you can book for gathering events. Interestingly, residents will also have a music room, a social room, games room, and a dance room. By the way, one of the clubhouses will also have a gourmet kitchen so that will come in handy if you want to host an event. It will also have some reading lounges, urban farming space, and many more. From the site plan, you can see that the developer is really trying to make the most of the limited plot that they have. Now, let's look at the unit mix. The majority of the flats will be 3 bedroom and 3 bedroom premium, where their size will be less than 1000 square feet. The key difference between the standard 3 bedroom and 3 bedroom premium is that the premium version has a slightly bigger living room and an extra toilet. If you have a bigger family or just want more space, you can opt for the 4 bedroom or 5 bedroom too. Now let's look at the floor plan, starting with the 3 bedroom first. At a glance, I love how the units are just squarish, easier to decorate and it really maximizes the space. As you open the door, you will immediately see the living room and kitchen. The living room is connected to the balcony where you can opt to install a zip track to make the balcony more usable for your family to enjoy. The bomb shelter is neatly tucked near the kitchen. This is a very good design as most people utilize their bomb shelter for either storage or for a helper's room. However, do note that there's no toilet for the helper. You only have two bathrooms in the standard three bedroom model. Now, let's look at the three bedroom premium model. In this model, you have an extra toilet connected to the kitchen and the bomb shelter is next to the third bedroom. The layout is again very squarish and it also comes with a balcony. But interestingly, the three bedroom premium flat has a dumbbell layout, which means that bedroom number three is on one side, but the master bedroom and bedroom number two are on the other side of the apartment. This layout eliminates the need for the long corridor walkways and overall makes the layout more efficient. Now onto the four bedroom model. Again, good squarish layout, also with a balcony attached to the living room. For this model, you have two bathrooms plus a toilet at the back. The bomb shelter is attached to the kitchen, so it's very ideal if you have a helper. The size of a typical four bedroom in this development ranges between 1141 to 1270 square feet 
making it a nice option for a larger family. The last model that they have is the 5 bedroom model which is the largest in the development. The size is just under 1500 square feet and from the floor plan, you can see that you have a significantly bigger living room and you even have two kitchens wet and dry. Out of the 5 bedrooms, Two have private bathrooms, so you have a master suite and also a junior suite. This will be great if you have your parents living with you for example, or if you are planning to rent out the junior suite. The layout is again very squarish and efficient. The bomb shelter in this unit is connected to the yard just behind the wet kitchen, and it also equipped with a toilet. Okay, now let's talk about the pros and cons of this development. What I like about this development is that all the units are squarish and designed very efficiently. I can see that the developer is trying to make the most of the space. I also like the fact that once you move in, you will pretty much have access to three different MRT stations. Combined with the project's proximity to top-rated schools and various amenities, I believe it will be easy for you to rent out or even sell this flat in the future. The fact that CDL is the developer developer of this project also somewhat brings peace to mind because the more experienced they are, hopefully the better the build quality is and they should also have a good cash flow to ensure that this project is delivered on time. And for upgraders, if you are currently owning an HDB, you don't have to pay the ABSD upfront when purchasing a new EC. However, you need to sell your previous flat within 6 months after collecting the keys to your EC. Now let's talk about the downside. Obviously, being in Bukit Batok means that you will have a long commute if you are working in the CBD area. But another thing to watch out is that this EC has a relatively higher entry price compared to some other EC projects. And given that it's a 99 year leasehold, that's something for you and your family to think about whether you want to go for this EC or just go for BTO or even resale. Another thing that worries me is looking at the site plan. If you notice, it's very compact. Because the developer is trying to maximize every inch, this also means that there's not much space between one block to another and there will be plenty of units where you and your neighbors are basically looking at each other because of the block view. Last but not least, because this is an EC and not a private condo, you do have to take note of the restrictions and regulations that come with an EC. For example, there's an income ceiling limit for you and your spouse and you can only take loans from banks but not from HDB and you have to fulfill the 5-year MOP etc. But still, in summary, if you are looking for an apartment in the West area, I highly recommend this project. Efficient layout, good developer, easy access to MRT stations, and good amenities. And after Tengah Town is fully developed, I think it will just help to increase the price of this EC even further. If you have the budget, I'd say go for the 4-bedroom unit because statistically, the more bedrooms that you have, the more profit you can make either from renting out rooms or even selling the whole place. You might ask, why not the 5 bedroom? Well, simply because the overall price quantum will be much higher and you will have a smaller pool of buyers that have that kind of budget. If you have to pick between a 3 bedroom and a 3 bedroom premium, simply from a reselling standpoint, I would go with the standard 3 bedroom. I think it's more value for money. Now, if you are interested in applying for this project, here's the timeline to take note of. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye!